What's good, I'm Mike Leisure. I'm an artist and I'm an art director, one half of Proper Worldwide. And a couple of months ago, we did a video about e-commerce photography, specifically for ads, web banners, and for social. So what happened was I had made that, and I wanted to show you guys the full process, but the video got kind of long, so I sped up through the um, post-production portion of it. Today, I wanna show you step-by-step -step how we replace the color of the backgrounds in the photos. Before we get started, I want to say thank you to all of our viewers. Uh, if you're new, welcome. If you are returning, awesome. Uh, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and leave a comment after if you enjoyed this. All right, so if you can, I'd actually recommend you shoot on the color backdrop of your choice ahead of time. That's just the thing of pre-production and you deciding what you want it to look like ahead of time so that you're not doing this in post. If you were to buy a backdrop, it's gonna cost you anywhere from 20 to $60, uh, depending on where you buy it from and how big you want it to be. And I think that is obviously gonna save you a lot of time, but if you had that and you shot on the backdrop of your choice, you probably wouldn't be here looking at this tutorial. So let's just get into it. In theory, this technique is very simple. We just select the background and then we add a solid color and then we set the blending mode of that layer to multiply. Uh, and then after that, we just adjust the color and then the opacity to your liking. So if that's good enough for you, you know what you're doing in Photoshop, go ahead, get out of here, do your thing. But if you wanna see this step-by-step, step, let's continue on. To get the most out of this, I highly recommend that you follow along and then work on your own project. If you want to use your own photos, that's fine. Feel free to do that. If you want to follow along with the same photos that I'm using, there's going to be a link in the description below. So go ahead and take time to download that, pause the video, whatever you need to do. Okay, so we have Photoshop open now. Okay, we're gonna start by using the quick select tool and you can do that by hitting W or you can use it by selecting the tools over here. You can select the background or you can select the hoodies and that really depends on which is easier. Sometimes it really depends on the photo. In this case, I don't think it really matters, but I'm gonna go ahead and select the background. Once you've had everything marqueed and selected, go up to this button here and then we can adjust the mask settings. And I like to work with the smooth and contrast settings until it looks good. Okay. And all right, once you've got everything marqueed up like this and selected, we're gonna hit this button here and then we're gonna create a solid color. And then it'll prompt you with this window here. And then once it pops up, you can go ahead and use this color picker. And then I like to actually pick something from the photo to make it feel more cohesive and it just really blends together well. And that's good. No, I'm just kidding. That looks like decent, but it's not the best for me. I feel like to make this look better, what we can do is go down here and then set the, the color, the solid to multiply. And then what that's gonna do is allow you to have your shadows here. So if I toggle on and off or switch back and forth between normal, you'll see the shadows are gone. And then here, the shadows are retained. And then next, we're gonna click into this window here, which allows us to work with the mask. What I'm gonna do is hit the brush here and, uh, or you can press B on your keyboard to brush these in here. And so if you notice right now, as I'm painting with the black, it actually takes it away. And then if I hit the white, then it'll add the color in, right? I'm just gonna undo that real quick. To make this easier and switch back and forth between black and white, you can hit the X on your keyboard or there's this like little double arrow thing you can hit here on the tools. And then we're just going to uh, look at the hardness of the brush here. I might put it to 50 right now. Oops, all right, so let's switch to white because we want to add and just clean this up a little bit along the edges. I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit here and then a little bit there. I feel like there's some spots here that could be better. So let's go ahead and zoom in by hitting command plus. And then you can hit the space bar and then it'll bring up this hand tool, which will allow you to drag and get closer to where you need to be. And then I just wanna clean this up as well, hitting that left bracket tool to make this smaller. All right, so next I'm gonna make the brush bigger by hitting the right bracket tool and then right click and I'm gonna make my hardness like soft. I'm gonna bring it down maybe even to like zero and then make it bigger. 
And what you can do now is you'll see it just adds a little bit to the edges. Oh, maybe too much there. I'm just going to go along the edges here and just click a little bit. And you notice if you look like right here, it starts to add a little bit of that pink to it from the spill, right? And I think it just makes it more realistic. And then I'm going to bring the size back down because this is a little corner here. Awesome. And then there's more that we can add to over here. Sweet. Spill it, dogs, spill it. And then we're just gonna call this um, BG color. So at the end here, what you're gonna wanna do is kind of switch it around, play with the colors if you want, because you already have your settings. Like from now, it's easy. I can literally do whatever color I want. Um, maybe I'll go with like something nice and uh, light. Mm, that feels good. Cool. So that's that for the uh, fruits lavender one. And then um, sometimes too, you can adjust the opacity if you wanted it to be a little lighter without kind of going too far from what you've selected or going through that uh, color window. Uh, what we're gonna do next is work on the Eric Payne shoes. All right, so the reason why I want to uh, work on this one is because I hate when you're doing a tutorial sometimes and then like they show you this really easy thing and then you go to do it on your own products and you're like, why is this so much more difficult? Uh, sometimes not the case, it is easy. Sometimes it is difficult. This one though, like really the difficulty level does vary depending on what type of product you're doing. Like let's say if you were to do a, a water bottle, um, it's pretty easy. All of that stays exactly the same. The edges are hard, unless you're shooting that on a black background or something, then it's like, gets difficult. But for the shoes here that we're working with, there's a lot of little tiny crevices in here and a lot of details that we gotta work with. Um, sometimes the edges kind of blend in because the background is very close to the soles of these shoes. So I wanna show you something difficult and then you can work with that kind of up your skill as you do it as well. There's a lot of different ways you can tackle this. You can use the lasso tool, like a polygonal lasso tool, and kind of like, or you can get to that by hitting L or selecting it over here, and then selecting each one of these like sections. I'm gonna do this really badly real quick just to show you. You can kind of select like that. I'm gonna try and go with the quick select tool right now. Let's see how this works. Oh, that's actually not too bad. Let's see how this goes. So as you're selecting, you can hit the Alt key and that's gonna select the opposite here. And then let's go into this. All right, see, so this is what I'm talking about. It starts selecting the sole of the shoe. Gross. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in using the space bar to move, and I'm gonna make this smaller and see if I can get this selection. All right, and then this little area, you can try to get in the selection, but honestly, it's probably gonna be a pain in the ass using this. So uh, I'm gonna come back and do that with the brush. But let's go ahead and get this little section. Okay, and this looks like it's a part of the shoe. All right, then we have our next section here. And so I wanna get rid of that, hitting Alt to select or deselect that area. Okay, so that does not look good at all. I'm gonna Command Z. And then I'm gonna hit the um, L on my keyboard or selecting it here. And then you're gonna to want to, because you already have this selected up here, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're hitting uh, Shift to add to it. If you notice there's that little plus sign there, that means you're adding. And if you don't, it's just gonna start a new selection. You're gonna lose everything you had before. So I'm gonna do this and then again, we can fix or add more of that in the next portion of our masking. All right, hitting W, we're gonna go back to this and you don't have to hit um, shift here because it is just adding to it. So you'll be fine there. And then hitting Alt, we'll go ahead and get rid of this here. And that looks decent. So let's move on to the next section. Okay, not too bad. And then what I like to do with these corners is because it gets hard to do, we're gonna hit L and then get back to the polygonal, 
hit the, the shift to make sure you're adding in. And then we're gonna go along here. And then to close it, you're gonna look for that little circle. You know, as the plus sign turns into a circle, boom, we've added that selection. All right, then we have this other section here that we need to add to. I'm gonna switch back to the quick selection by hitting W. Fire, that happened pretty easily. Let's see how this turns out. Okay, not too bad, but it's selecting this here. So I'm gonna go ahead and back that up just a little bit. And then I'm gonna try to get up in here, see if that works. Nice. All right, hitting Alt, I'm gonna get rid of that stuff. All right, hitting Command Zero is gonna back you out to the full view of everything. And then again, we're gonna hit this little button here below the layers panel, and then hit Solid Color. I'm going to select around and see what looks good. Wow, that actually looks kind of fire. Oh, it's too bright. Maybe too dark, I kind of like this vibe. Okay, so hit OK. And then as you can see, it's, it's pretty subtle, but that's a nice color. It makes it feel just like good to me. Like this is like some essential, some fear of God type vibe. Like, I don't know, it just feels good and, and uh, cohesive, right? As you notice, I didn't really use the selected mask on this one because it looks pretty decent already. What we're gonna do is hit this and then hit multiply. And again, that's gonna retain the shadows. But this is the part that we need to get in and then clean up certain areas. Like I'm seeing along here, this looks a little weird. So switching to our brush tool by hitting B and then selecting this little window here, we're going to come in. Uh, I guess we need to make the brush smaller by hitting the left bracket. Oops, Command Z, undo that. And then I'm gonna hit X to switch. So you notice the X will switch in between here. All right, so we're on black now, and that's going to help us get rid of that. Uh, I'm gonna undo that real quick. If you, let's say you click one time here on the right side, and then you hold down the shift key and you click onto the other side, it'll actually keep that line straight. And then I'm gonna switch back here to the other color and so that I can fill back in the other side. And yeah, let's see if there's anything else. Ah, so this area that we were working with earlier, I'm gonna hold shift, I'm gonna click, hold, shift, and then add back to that. And then just hop in through here and brush this area out so that it looks realistic. And sometimes on certain colors, you can actually be a little more liberal with it and people won't notice too much. Like if you actually go over the black, like nobody's gonna notice that. But obviously the, the craftsmanship, the attention to detail is gonna be up to you. Um, this looks okay, but I feel like it could be cleaner. So I'm just gonna clean that up. Uh, just a couple clicks and uh, holding shift. And this looks a little weird. Maybe we can get the lines a little more clean. And I think it's actually bleeding in there a bit too much for my taste. So we're gonna get rid of some of that. And then let's see if we can get this cleaner. Oh no, it just looks like that. Ah, okay, so here's another section and we're gonna go ahead and hit uh, X to make sure it's on black and then we're gonna get rid of this. Okay, and then, oops, we're going to, that part is fine. Let's get into the middle here. Okay, it looks like some parts are a little bit weird, so let's clean that up. All right, so again, what we're gonna do is make the brush a little bit bigger, and then I'm gonna right click and make sure my hardness is down. What we're gonna do here is just add a little splash to the edges here so that it looks more realistic. Um, and we don't wanna overdo this, but you kinda just have to do it to taste, and the more you train your eye, you'll start to see what that looks like. So like I'm looking at that little section there and then we're just gonna add a little bit for that spill. Just a little. And you'll notice it really helps to like blend that just a bit. Maybe I'll add a little more here. Okay, 
And then same thing here. Let's add a little spillage. Spillage village. I think we missed this section here. And hit command zero to come back out to the top. A little before and after. It's very slight, um, but it makes a huge difference. Rename this to color B, BG color. Wow. And then if you wanted to, you can also adjust the uh, opacity if you want, but I think I'm just gonna leave it right there because the color was so subtle to begin with. All right, so that's it. Great job to everyone who followed along. Um, if it looks great, then congratulations. If you don't like the way it looks, it's really just a matter of practice. You're gonna have to do it over and over, get yourself familiar with the tools and then just keep doing it. And the more you do it, the better you get, the faster it becomes. You won't have to watch this video anymore. You won't have to think about it really. You just do it because you know it. If you're interested in learning more about how to take photos for creative product photography or for your e-commerce website, click on one of these videos here. And uh, that's it. This is Proper Worldwide. Keep it proper. Thank you.